Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome into the studio. Uh, today we're flipping the script a little bit. Um, I'm going to be doing the interviewing, and for those of you who don't know, my name is Blake Potoff, and I'm the executive director at the historic Fairmont Opera House here in lovely Fairmont. And today we're flipping that script because I am here with Mr. Jeff Rouse, um, who is the creator and the brain behind our story production. So, Jeff, thanks so much for being here today, and, and for having me, frankly. Um, so. I wanted to talk to you today about how all of this started. Uh, it's been quite the ride, me getting involved with this and doing some of the interviews, and um, I really, really enjoy it, but where did it come from? Where did it start? Well, that's a really good question, and you know, this seems kind of odd to me, because I'm <laughs> yeah. not used to being on this side <laughs> asking me questions yeah. uh, about what's happening, but mm -hmm. it is a pretty interesting story yeah. that uh, your viewers might find interesting. Yeah. And uh, Fairmont has always been very fortunate to have local cable television shows for the last 25 mm -hmm. years. Uh, Janet Ruth, Al Travis, uh, Jeff Hagen, to name just a few, that made this possible for many, many years. Well, in 2007, uh, all that was coming to an end. And I and my wife, as local business owners, thought this was too bad because this was such a great asset to our community mm -hmm. to promote through video and to talk about what's happening in, in our community on television. We didn't think it should end. Mm -hmm. So I started complaining as you do. <laughs> yeah. I started yes. complaining around town to other business people like, well, this is ridiculous. We should be able to keep this alive. And you can imagine what everybody said. Oh, I'm well, sure. You think it's such a good idea. <laughs> Why don't you do it? That's right. Like, oh, yeah. for God's sakes. And then it was intriguing to me. Yeah. Uh, I told my wife, I says, you know, I think we could do this. Mm -hmm. So uh, we decided, made the commitment to each other that we would proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, I went and talked to Shelly and Bruce at uh, Gemini Studios yeah. about shooting it. Uh, Bruce wouldn't give me an answer for a while. He had to ponder it and think about yeah. it. And it was driving me crazy because now I had uh, made the commitment myself. and. Uh, uh, he finally agreed mm -hmm. to go forward as far as shooting in different things. He did a very fine job for about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's Shelly. Shelly ended up doing it, thank yeah. God, and, yeah. and has done a great job for us over the years. What kind of things have been milestones for you? What um, what different interviews? Are there, is there one or two that stick out to you? Or, or maybe there's projects uh, that stick out. What kind of things have really gotten you to this point, do you feel? Good question. Uh, when we started, we did your pretty traditional local show with interviews and different things. Well, it didn't take very long before uh, we decided we needed to do something a little different to draw attention. Mm -hmm. So we did. Uh, we came up with uh, the idea of a soap opera, and it was called As the Corn Grows. Mm -hmm. And it would be kind of a spoof on soap operas and, and kind of show country living. And we did it only to draw attention. We knew it was going to be corny. We knew it was going to be a little ridiculous. We knew it was going to be great fun. So we developed this soap opera as just something to draw attention. Well, almost immediately when it started airing, we were contacted by other communities that said, that is pretty clever. Mm -hmm. Can you do something for us? That's how it all began. So uh, over the years, we keep, uh, kept expanding and expanding with our uh, viewing area, showing as the corn grows, as well as covering local things in all these different mm -hmm. communities, uh, to uh, 1,500 towns, nine states. And I'll give total credit to the soap opera for drawing the attention that we wanted. Mm -hmm. Now, the, when I say drawing the attention, it's quirky, it's corny, yeah. it's ridiculous, and we know it. But that's what drew attention. If it wouldn't have been for the soap opera, As the Corn Grows, we would not be in 1,500 towns, nine states today. Well, it's it's fascinating how how quickly that kind of grew. And, and, and in that, there were some local celebrities who really helped build that too. So, and you were telling me before, there's something like 100 local celebrities here from, from the area that have been involved in that. How did that come about? You just go out and talk to people and say, hey, I need you for five minutes? <laughs> that was pretty much, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was uh, for, for my wife and I. We would think of a character, we'd talk to Shelly, we would develop it some mm -hmm. more and do some different things before usually we had a person. 
Mm -hmm. then it'd be kind of like, oh, you know what? I saw so-and-so the other day. He would be perfect for that part. So pretty soon we'd invite them to come in. And people, thank God, people were really willing to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And we had over, like you said, over 100 people from our community that have appeared on the show. A strong 65 had character names and backstories. Wow. So they were continual, uh, continuing to be on the show over the years wow. that it ran. Uh, the soap opera today is still being aired in syndication <laughs> yep. throughout our viewing area. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, so it's, it, it's, it was great fun to shoot. Uh, everyone, thank you very much to all the volunteers that made yeah. it possible. Because without them, none of this would have happened. Right. And they didn't take themselves <laughs> too seriously either. So when we did... As the corn grows, mm -hmm. it surprisingly became pretty darn popular pretty yeah. quick. A lot of people were talking about it, mm -hmm. whether they're big fans or not. They were talking about it, which is what the goal was for As the Corn Grows. Well, because of the success of that, we decided to do some spinoffs. So we did the Cockabur Morning Show, which is our version of the morning show. We did the Women of Sweet Swine County, Split Hoof Tonight, Cooking It Up with Betty, just to name a few. And they all were filmed by the fictitious uh, TV show, mm -hmm. Cluck TV. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Cluck TV yeah. is in Sweet Swine County. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, so it just all turned into this whole storyline and backstory. Mm -hmm. And the more we did that, and the more we expanded that that uh, uh, storyline, the more people came involved. Mm -hmm. uh, the more uh, characters wanted to be on the show, the more people wanted to be guests on the show yeah. because the talk shows, we had real guests on fake talk shows. Mm -hmm. So it had that campy humor, but the subjects and the things that we were uh, uh, promoting were real. So when we started our story, Small yeah. Town Living at Its Best, seemed to be a very appropriate name. Yeah. But as we grew, Destination Small Town, because we're going farther out, seemed to be better fitted. Yeah. So we became Destination Small Town and our story productions type thing. Yeah. So that's how it evolved into what we now call oh, Destination okay. Small Town. Is it just television or, or what other things do you do? Well, television, of course, uh, put us on the map and drew mm -hmm. attention that made all these other towns want to come on board. But as you know very well, mm -hmm. the Internet has exploded. Uh, and it's not me saying it for us, but just for all of us, it's made such a difference. When we first started this in 2007, mm -hmm. somebody said, are you going to do a website? And I'm like, why would we do a website? We're on TV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. Why would we do that? Yeah. Now we have this elaborate website where you can go on and you can look at towns, you can look at counties, you can look at regions, you can look at points, of, well, everything, mm -hmm. about everything. Uh, and so everything's on the web, including the television shows from the past and present. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, oh, by the way, we're on TV too. Right. You know, yeah. it's just a changed world. Yeah. And we've changed with that. So are there things that stick out um, or places that stick out because of experiences you've had? Yes. Uh, a lot of these different towns, uh, I have personal favorites in different states. Mm -hmm. Fairmont's uh, obviously. Fairmont's number one. Number right one. There. That's what I thought. Saying, I knew it. <laughs> but in different states, different sizes. Uh, Jamesport, Missouri stands out as one I like. Population about 800. I love the community because they really pull together and make it into a very much live tourist spot because it's a big Amish community oh, and okay. it's just a beautiful little town and they do a lot of clever things. I really enjoy uh, uh, seeing uh, roadside attractions okay, yeah. that are over the top. Carhenge, you know, mm -hmm. that's uh, Stonehenge's version of cars, you mm -hmm. know, in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, the world's largest peacock in, in uh, some place in, in, in uh, Kansas. My favorite town yeah. is Tightwad, Missouri. <laughs> Tightwad, Missouri. <laughs> Tightwad, Missouri. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I think their population's 84 or something oh, like that. It's way in southern Missouri. Uh, I, I fell in love with the little town. Oh, and the wow. bank had tons of people that opened accounts there just so they could have a bank account in Taiwan. 
Wow. That's <laughs> just that was So that was one yeah. that kind of stood out. Oh, yeah. I can believe uh, that. Every state, every town. We only uh, promote towns of 10,000 and less. Mm -hmm. Every town has something of interest. And if we can tell about that in a unique, fun, entertaining way, it will help the town. It will help the business. Yeah. It's such a wonderful project that you've kind of taken on it and grown to what to what it is today. So we've talked about some of these, you know, the smaller towns and these wonderful like memories of different things that, that you've you've seen throughout the years. Uh, are there any other ones? Uh, you've got to have met somebody famous in the last, and, and not just me either. <laughs> like, there's got to be somebody <laughs> more famous. You were one of the highlights. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm here already. You don't have to butter me up. <laughs> so, but who else have you met? There's got to be somebody famous that you've met over the years we've had interesting guests on the yeah. shows and, and met some interesting people probably some of the highlights uh, i really enjoyed when we had the eagle center uh, oh yeah uh, come on and bring uh harriet the eagle uh was wow. on the show i thought that was really cool yeah. uh lenny lenny tweeton interview with Walt, walter mondale oh okay uh, that was a he great was on the show yes well, or on one, uh, on of, the one shows. of our yeah. shows yeah. you know so i thought that was wow. a great interview uh, I had the chance to interview clear back in almost the beginning. In mm -hmm. fact, the very first interview I ever did was with Will Hutchins. Okay. Now, Will Hutchins, you might not recognize the name, mm -hmm. but uh, Will Hutchins had a TV show in the early uh, late 50s, early 60s mm -hmm. called Sugarfoot. Okay. And then he went on to do several movies with Alphys. And so wow. he, his career was wide wide range while well, yeah. he and Betsy Palmer who's also uh, someone I interviewed at the same time performed at the Opera House that's right and yeah. uh, did a great performance of love letters mm -hmm. and then I had a chance to interview them at our club at our story studio slash uh, Fairmont Film Society yeah. uh, so it was really a highlight for me to get a chance yeah. to interview them I was a little bit nervous uh, I can uh, imagine, yeah. Because uh, they had done this sort of thing a lot. Yeah. I had not. Now, I'd like to think when you do a lot of interviews, and I've done a lot of interviews now, mm -hmm. you improve and you get better. Yeah. Or you just do the best you can. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> I do the best I can. Yeah. So uh, well, those were some high points. Yeah. Uh, probably... Uh, uh, the soap opera being nominated for an independent soap opera award on mm -hmm. New York City, as well as we were in a film a festival yeah. in Clear Lake. Uh, someone called from there and said, we understand you do this quirky soap opera as a current mm -hmm. girls. We want to show that. Very And cool. we're like, you want to show our <laughs> soap opera on, on, at this? So we went down there. For them to show it, uh, a group of the volunteers and I and my wife went down mm -hmm. there to see it. And it was very interesting. They showed it. I was a little nervous because it is what it is, you know. Yeah. And afterwards, there's a gentleman sitting next to me. And he says, is this, are you guys part of this group? And I said, yeah. And he says, you nailed the camp. <laughs> you nailed the camp, quit, a kid. Mm -hmm. So I was like... Oh yeah, we got it. We got it. So it's th those kind of things were fun. And again, not taking ourselves too serious, but still kind of shocked uh, of what we're involved yeah. in. Uh, lastly, probably a uh, last highlight that comes to mind is we did an awards banquet uh, six months after we started mm. honoring the volunteers. We called it the Starstruck Award. It does air upon occasion mm -hmm. in our area. Uh, it was all fictitious. So we gave we were given awards to ourselves, mm -hmm. but our competition would be like some sixty minutes versus our version of sixty minutes. Oh, and of course, yeah. we won. Yeah. You know, yeah. no, that sort of thing. Well, uh, the amusing part to me was uh, afterwards when I was walking down Main Street, several people stopped me and congratulated us on all the awards we had won. So we thought that was pretty fun. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, it's just it's fascinating how how this has kind of grown and developed throughout time. Another highlight is probably we did a concert series. Oh, really? We had concerts once a month for a strong two two and a half years, mm -hmm. and uh, they they were really fun. Bringing in entertainers from literally around the country, singer songwriters for the most part, a lot of folk, a lot of jazz, and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So that was a very fun part. Hi, one of the highlights there being Bill Miller 
who uh, really? uh, singer songwriter, a Native American, mm -hmm. uh, won the uh, uh, Grammy two years in a row as singer songwriter for for his his career. Uh, so that was the highlight, as well as some somewhat Minnesota local based people. Uh, Charlie Roth comes to mind, uh, Justin Roth, no relation. Uh, but yeah, we've had people from as far away as from New York that came here to perform uh, at our wow. studio. So that was wow. fun. Yeah. And we worked with the Opera House yeah. at that time very closely as far as making sure that uh, we promoted them. And yes, they even promoted our little deals mm -hmm. here too. So. Have there been other little side projects? Oh, there? yes. There's yeah. been many little side <laughs> projects. Many things we tried that didn't work yeah. or, or, or worked well for a short time mm -hmm. or just was too big a project. Mm -hmm. One of which in particular is we did a magazine oh, in yeah. 11. We did five episodes. It was a nice magazine. I liked the magazine, and it was very well received. Yeah. It's a big project. Yeah. It was like, Lots wow. of work, yeah. It was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Something had to give, and uh, the television show was still growing and growing. So uh, we did a short, limited edition mm -hmm. of the magazine. But uh, uh, it, it, was, it was a fun project. Uh, we've done radio. We're doing radio now. Oh. We're appearing on uh, a, a local, in Mankato, a local mm -hmm. radio show. We've, we've been in countless magazines and uh, publications about mm -hmm. the history of our story productions and Destination Small Town. Uh, the newest project is, we're on right now, yeah. Martin County on TV. Well, uh, some individuals asked me, if we would consider doing another local, local show mm -hmm. that promoted organizations and businesses that uh, what's happening today. And we decided that we would do that. Uh, I talked to Shelly and she said she'd be happy to film that. And we, mm -hmm. uh, like yourself, uh, yeah. uh, other entertainment venues, many, many businesses. We've already interviewed, done interviews with 42 citizens from uh, uh, Martin County. Yeah. And we have scheduled almost 50 more. For, for me, when I watch the clips and watch the interviews, uh, it's so educational. Well, and, uh, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. And, and don't you think, too, a lot of these people I've known for years that are coming up. Yeah. Years and years, like, like most of our viewers. Mm -hmm. But I don't know a lot about them. You know, mm -hmm. why did they get in business? Why are they doing this? If they're working for the city or, or uh, organization like yours, how did it all begin? What are they doing this for? Right. If we don't know what these people are doing, uh, the individual tends to think there's nothing happening in our community. Mm -hmm. When there is, and and for me too, it's interesting to see the drive. And like we're talking today, what what drove you to start this? What was the what was the tipping point for you to start your business or or move to this area or do this that the other? And then how you can well align yourself with other individuals in the community you may not have known. We've known each other for quite a while, and I didn't know the backstory of how this company started. And it's really interesting to hear about there was an opportunity, and there was an opportunity that. I, that people were asking you and nudging you to do and to take and and then that's how you got to where you are today and i think that's such a common story with a lot of people in small towns and i think that's really what you've highlighted through this whole process that there are people in small communities all over the United States, and specifically the nine states that you go to, that have a drive to do something better or do something different. Well, and just what you're saying, the people, uh, you'll see at the end of this show, as all yeah. the shows, the sponsors of the show, these are the people that also believe strongly in, in, in getting the word out about what's in our community, making sure people know what's out there. Mm -hmm. These people truly make a difference, and they work hard every day to make it happen and we need to support them. That's the biggest thing I can help. Yeah. Uh, if you check out our website, when you go on there, you can literally find anything, almost, <laughs> anything yeah. you want to know about towns of 10,000 or less. I invite you to go visit this. Yeah. The biggest thing, when to get back to your question at hand. <laughs> oh yeah. Finally. <laughs> uh, the, the biggest thing I can take, by, take out from this is whether you're young or old like me, Work your passion. Find out what, how you can make a difference in your own way.
and do it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, and I feel like I've done that. I uh, found my passion at the Opera House, and it's been wonderful to talk to you about that. It's wonderful to hear about yours. Now, if people want, and they all should, you all should, <laughs> to find out more about what you're doing. If uh, I haven't said enough, for God's right. sakes. <laughs> what, well, where can we find more information? What's, uh, what's the website? Uh, can we give you a call? Uh, what kind of things? Uh, what's your contact information? Obviously, to make sure we can find uh, the website is where yes. everything's at. However, we are on Facebook. Be sure and like us at destinationsmalltown.com. Okay. And then the, the, the website, too, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, those are the best ways to learn about what's happening all the time. We, we cover a ton of different things uh, uh, from all not only the towns, but the local shows. The mm -hmm. local show also has a Facebook page, which is Martin County on TV. Be sure and like that. You can see all the shows that we've done about Martin County uh, on there in the last couple of years. Uh, so I think that's important, too. Yeah. And if you have ideas for a guest, a show, or, or something you want us to do, call me. Wonderful. Well, it's been such a pleasure, and I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here uh, multiple times now um, and, and spending time with you and learning more about Martin County and learning more about Our Story Productions. Uh, it's been wonderful. So thank you for this opportunity. I really it appreciate it. It's yeah. fun to be on the thank other side so. of the... <laughs> Of the, of the table. Yeah, a <laughs> little different, but um, it's been it's been really interesting. So thank you so much for for your generosity and having oh. me here, and, and thank you so much for your time and appreciate. telling the folks out there about uh, your wonderful business here in Fairmont. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate. Yeah. It. All right.